Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard. Today I'm gonna talk about the Mobula 6 HD and actually I've already reviewed this, links in the description, but I've not talked about the way to make this fly and record better actually. So I'm gonna teach you how to make this fly for like 30% more fly time which is really really good and also I'm gonna show you the best settings, the best video settings to record and I know I have the GoPro drones and I like every time I have to fly I use those I never use the split drones anymore because like the quality of GoPro is unmatched but this product makes sense in my opinion because it's really tiny, it's really cheap if you wanna starting out and you don't wanna commit to getting a GoPro and destroying it and having to fiddle with it this is a really easy solution and it's also very cheap and right now it's 105 dollars on Banggood which is really really good for an HD drone and Banggood does this promotion until the 24th of this month like the day after tomorrow probably ends and I'm gonna give you discounts anyway but until the 24th you get big discounts check the description I'm gonna give you a spreadsheet with all the coupon codes even for DJI stuff and really really big NFT discounts check it out so let's start with the way to make this fly longer actually I need to have a benchmark so I'm gonna make a flight without doing this and then I'm gonna toggle this option and I'm gonna make another flight so we're gonna compare the flight differences explanation is every BLL ES ESC basically runs at 24 kilohertz PWM rate but that's really tailored among bigger motors like 5 inch and stuff like that and they found out that with 48 kilohertz basically doubling that rate these motors spin a lot more efficiently actually so what, that's what we need to do actually if you have a BLLE 32 ESC you can do that in the options no problem if you have a BLLE ES we need to change firmware and there are two ways of doing this there is JS and there is Jets Maverick in this tutorial we're gonna consider Jets Maverick because first it's free second it's a Firmware you have to download and use with your regular BLLE suite, so it's really really easy. JS you have to download another firmware and if you want to do more stuff like um, RPM filtering, which I'm not talking about that in this video, but it's basically a way to make your drone flies better. With JS you have to pay, with Jets Maverick is already installed in your firmware you're gonna do load today. So if you want to do that in the future you already have that enabled. So let's start out so the first thing you need to do is I imagine you already know how to use beta flight and you have the drivers installed you go to Google Chrome you download BLLE configurator we have it here really easy and that's a Chrome app but it works amazing you get a USB cable you connect it to your laptop you connect it to your drone and what we need to do now is read what ESCs we have so connect and now you have to connect the ESCs actually with the battery now that I have a battery I'm gonna connect it turns on and now we should be able to read setup and here we have so remember this number right here we have ESCs OH5 and if you have an H in the middle of your ESC name you're fine and you can do this if you don't you cannot do it I'm sorry but like I've never seen a drone modern drone without H in the middle so really easy and remember this number now we're gonna go on the internet look up to it on the uh, Jets Maverick downloads and download the appropriate firmware maybe you have another firmware but if you're doing this on this drone probably is that always double check if you do the wrong firmware you're gonna break your ESCs or damage them so be careful with this perfect now we are on github on the Jets Maverick BLLE page actually I'm gonna leave you a link on in the description so you can check it we just need to go to X file 16.7748 K and that's basically for the seven, for the 48 kilohertz we click on that and now you need to remember the number I add OH5 so you scroll down and you find your number OH 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 h5 here it is and now this page opens and basically you have this code to save it you need to go to row it opens the code and you just go right click 
save save as and it should save it as oh5.x at the end basically and that's what you're looking for and before actually flashing i did a test flight with a 250 milliampere battery i drained it to 3.2 volts and actually flew for 2 minutes 0.32 and the max like amps consumes was like 5 flying really really slow and steady and an average consumption of 4.5 4.8 4 so let's see after, after flashing what happens i guess it's gonna consume like 3.8 4 amps maybe something around that and it should fly for three minutes actually if my previsions are correct let's check this out let's connect to the laptop again <laughs> Connect, connect your battery. And then you can read the setup. Okay, now we go to flash all. Then we select file manually. And in downloads, it should be in downloads if I'm not mistaken. And now it is flashing. Basically the issue I had is uh, the, the program didn't find the X file like with the filter i had to go to show all files and now it showed the correct x file and then you click on that you go ok and it flashes really easy and now we should be at 48 kilohertz let's try it and you can actually close your laptop because we are done and i don't know why but it started fail saving and i did have a fail safe back there and then it started fail saving again and again. I don't know why actually, but it was consuming a lot less amps. Like my prevision were correct. It goes between 3.9 and 4.2 amperes. Before it was 4.5 and 5. So much better. I mean, it's a substantial improvement. And for these small drones, and for these small drones, it's the best. Like one S little 65 millimeter drones it gives you the most efficiency if you start going 75 millimeter two inches drones it's still good and if you go to 2.5 to 3 inch you start losing the efficiency and up you don't, don't use it like 5 inch don't use it on a 5 inch it, it doesn't work that good and now let's change those stock settings on the camera which are not the best in the box they give you this nifty little tool which you can connect at the back and it gives you access to the menu and remove your SD card for this because otherwise it doesn't go into the menu and actually you can do this by popping off this propeller and then there is enough space to fit the connector inside of course don't break it and now you're gonna need a pair of goggles to see the OSD okay now you grab the menu you press the middle button and yeah it opens the menu so you navigate with the buttons it's really easy you go to video 180p 60 is good the save and exit and also auto recording on of course because you want to start recording when you turn on your drone then you go to image so I can't read okay so duration six five okay it's uh saturation so i'd go with five which is the stock settings everything is at five when you get it but contrast leave it at two because you can add contrast later when you go in post production brightness five is fine and sharpness i get three because with five it's over sharpened i don't like it at all then image flip no metering average field of view wide save and exit and this will make your screen i mean your video from the fpv feed a little bit more uh, washed out but you get a much better result in the video that's get recorded and that's it you go save and exit and now I'm gonna show you how good the video is like that. For the saturation you can mess up with it, like find what you like, but 5 is fine, don't go over it because it's gonna get oversaturated and you can always color correct it in post. Like for make a good CineWoop video you always want to 
Post correct everything. Don't let these drones do the job. They are not good at it. Your software is, will be much better. And it is not a video of mine if I don't break something again. It's a trademark <laughs> right now. Basically, I was flying right there, like it's, it was not super far. But this receiver is not the best. That's like receiver and VTX are not the best. They are meant to be flown indoors. So there is wind and there is stuff. The drone picked up the wind. It went a bit far. I mean, it was 60 meters from here and I lost signal. It, pre it crashed into the ground and now the camera is not turning on anymore. Luckily I have the video, so I can show you that small bit I did. And again, there is a bit of jello, i already seen it, and, and the drone is not super smooth because there is wind. This drone is made to fly indoors. So if you want to fly outdoors, I suggest you getting something bigger, like a Mobula 7 HD was one I had and I was really really happy about it. If you have to go bigger, like those drones start getting expensive. I like the Cinecan, but now there are different drones like the Alpha from iFlight and drones like that, but they are freaking expensive. For that price you can get the GoPro drones and the quality is just another level, like it's a thousand times better. So if you want to get a split type of drone, get the cheapest you can find. Mobula 7, I guess, is, is kind of cheap as well. And it's... 3S compatible, so you can do quite a lot with it. I have a video that's got popular with the Mobula 7. I flew in uh, like a river and it, it does perform. It does perform, perform good. But the split type cameras are limited. I hope you like this video. The actual tip on how to make your drones fly longer applies to all of your micro drones, even the Dyson Minis and GoPro drones in general, naked GoPro drones in general. So. Let me know how it goes because it's a really cool mod and it can improve quite a bit your flight time. As always, you'll find all the links down in the description. Stay safe and happy flying! Bye!